So you've maybe heard us talking the last while about a GIS unit for the Swan River Valley. And the question of course is what is that? We're watching an RCMP promo video here and it certainly looks interesting, but the reality is much of what goes on for policing in the valley now looks nothing like that. So a quick peek at what a GIS unit is, it stands for a General Investigative Unit. It's going to cost us about $67 a person for every single man, woman and child in the entire Swan River Valley. That's a pile of money, but we are hoping for some federal help with that and getting maybe 30% off the cost. We're going to get quite deep into what GIS does, but if you're only watching the first minute, GIS officers don't take regular calls from the public. They spend their time targeting drug dealers, thieves, those who buy stolen property, and of course, organized crime operating in the Swan River Valley. They have time to do things regular officers don't, such as follow up on bail conditions, write search warrants, work sources for information, conduct surveillance, and of course, ruin criminals' days entirely. Yes, that is the Chamber of Commerce monster parade in the background. We're just watching some random video. We're going to get much deeper into GIS. You have the basics already, but if you want to know all the details, well, stick around for a while. We'll keep talking. So I have to admit, I was not a fan of having a GIS unit at first. To me, it looked like a waste of money. It's $625,000 a year that could be better spent on something else. Plus, as many of you would say, why don't the police that are here already just fix the problem? Well, it took some education for me, and I wanted to share that with you, so maybe you get why we need one too. The officers we have right now respond to every call that comes in to police, and they have to. They go to every single one of them, at least almost every one of them, and that keeps them very busy. In fact, many times what happens is when they get a call, they don't get a chance to actually go back and investigate it. Take, for example, a break-in at a business. So they might get called out at 2 o'clock in the morning because someone's broken in, and they start investigating, they take some pictures, they talk to the business owner, but then another call comes in, and off they go again. Well, it might be days before they actually get back to checking for the video and finding out who broke in and then try to find the person and unfortunately sometimes that just doesn't get done entirely they tell us they have almost as many calls in the swan river valley as they do in the city of portage the prairie of course that's a much bigger place and has twice as many officers so you can imagine how busy hours are just trying to keep up to those calls coming in every minute of every day they don't get a chance to go do the more interesting parts of police work which of course is catching the really bad guys. We have all asked ourselves why a police car doesn't just sit outside a drug house, wait for someone to go get some drugs, and take them to jail. And the reality is, if they try that, the chances are they'll get another call while they're waiting and off they go, and they actually can't finish that surveillance. That's one of the things the GIS unit could do a whole lot better. GIS officers are generally plain clothes and they drive plain unmarked vehicles without even the police lights in them. So you don't know they're there and you don't know what they're doing. And as Mr. Drug Dealer, that's a very dangerous thing. The GIS unit has time to watch your drug dealing location, collect up that evidence, get a search warrant from a judge, and then get the West District Crest unit in to knock over that drug house, seize everything that's in there, and get the bad guys in jail. There's more to it than that though. We know judges are letting people out too easy and we can't stop that, but they always have conditions on them. So say for example, that drug dealer's arrested and goes to jail. Then he's let out with a condition that he can't be in a certain area or maybe he has a curfew. Well, the GIS unit has time to go check that curfew at midnight and 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. And the first time they find the drug dealer violating their rules, back to jail they go. You may think this sounds like harassing drug dealers, and it is. That's entirely the point, to harass drug dealers so much and keep putting them in jail so many times that they either stay in jail permanently or give up on selling drugs in our area. Take the copper thefts we went through in the summer. Lots of people stealing copper, but you know they weren't selling it themselves. They were selling it to somebody else who was taking it further away. Again, there's something the GIS unit can chase after. They can spend the time finding out who's buying that copper, conduct the sting operation, get the search warrants, and get them in jail. If there's no market for stolen copper, there's really no reason for druggies to be stealing it. I've had people say, so Bill, you buy this GIS unit for all this public tax dollars, does that mean they're going to arrest every single shoplifter in Swan River? And it doesn't. I wish it did, but that's simply not what it is. They aren't going to spend their time arresting each shoplifter that shoplifts one loaf of bread. What they'll do instead is clear out the drugs in the area. They'll clear out the people that buy the stolen property, and the results of that will be seen on Main Street in Swan River. If there's no place to sell something you steal to get drugs, there's no point stealing it. And if there's no drugs to buy or very few of them, 
and you're addicted to drugs, well, hopefully you go for treatment. But if you don't, you go someplace else where you can still get drugs. If we can turn off the tap of that drug supply and turn off the opportunity to sell stolen goods, all of a sudden our valley looks a whole lot better because all the little crimes don't exist if the big guys are gone. We aren't the first place to try this out. Porter's Le Perry had a GIS unit for several years. Things were really bad in Porter's Le Perry, and they got a lot better with the GIS guys doing their job. They were annoying the criminals so bad that some of them left, and the rest of them ended up going to jail. That's exactly what we need here. Now to be clear, GIS isn't the only solution. It's going to take the entire community working together. We've got a lot of troubles here because it's always been such a nice place. We haven't even locked our doors until the last couple of years. So we need to do everything together. We need the GIS unit to go get those hardened criminals and get them evicted from our valley. But we also need to finish off putting up the cameras so the little crimes are caught on tape and those people go to jail too. Those cameras also save the RCMP a lot of time so they're not looking all around for video. They can go to one place and get it. We need the community patrol vehicle rolling around as well. It keeps up that pressure on small time criminals so they don't want to be here. And we need to do more alarm systems. We need every place that's empty for any amount of time to have an alarm. That'll make sure that people aren't breaking into a house and living there for weeks when the owner isn't home. We must stop that. We must make sure that if you break into a business, someone comes immediately to stop you. That you don't get hours to steal goods. I'm not suggesting we live in a state where we feel like Big Brother's always with us, but I certainly am suggesting we need to do whatever it takes to stop this and get it better. And then we can start easing off one bit at a time and find that perfect mix where we pay enough attention it doesn't get bad again, but we also feel like we live in a wonderful place. Now on the GIS front, so far all four area municipalities have agreed to contribute money to the GIS program, so it's in the process of getting arranged. It should be done in the next few months, and we'll have three specialized officers driving criminals insane in the valley. In fact, if you're a criminal listening to us, may I suggest it's time to just pack up and go now. Why wait to go to jail? You could leave now with a get out of jail free card. I hope that brief overview has at least shared some of what we expect to do with the GIS program with the Swanover RCMP. If you have more questions on it, get in touch with any of your elected officials. They'd be glad to share as many details as they can. We'll see you next time.